Hello there. My name is Harlan Ellison. I'm a writer. I write books, I write movies. I've been doing it for about 35 years. They tell me that I'm world famous. I guess after 42 books and being translated into 26 languages, there is some small claim to that. My listing in Who's Who is larger than Ronald Reagan's, but we, we need not go into that. Let me point out this wall here in my study, in my library. This is a wall of books of art, ranging from alphabetically Art Deco at the top to, say, Van Gogh down at the bottom. But over here, in these two large bookcases, are titles that deal with comic books and comic strips. Now, there's a reason why they're together. It's not by chance. For me, comics have always been a kind of art, a very serious art. Here in America, for a long, long while, people thought of comic books only as throwaway, transient, kitty stuff. But in Europe, where comic book artists are treated as classical artists, they recognize the importance of this Native American art form. Now, you may find it peculiar that I call this a Native American art form. You see, there are only five really Native American art forms, ones that we've created ourselves that are ours. There's the banjo, there's jazz, there's musical comedy as we understand it today, the, the mystery story as created by Edgar Allan Poe, and comic books. Now, I'm 52 years old. And I've been reading comics since, oh, I don't know, I guess 1938 when I bought my first one, which was maybe World's Fair comics with Superman and Batman. You may say, how peculiar for someone who likes to think of himself as one with, uh, with Kafka and Poe to be thinking of comic books seriously. But let me tell you, I'm a comic book fan. I love comic books. Comic books were the training ground for me in terms of ethics, in terms of the things I learned about courage, good and evil, what heroism was, right and wrong. Comic books are the Grimm's fairy tales of the popular culture. They're done by serious people who care about the work they do, even as Van Gogh and, the, and Magritte and anyone else did. Today we're going to show you the work of 10 of the most important comic book artists who have ever lived. One of them's a Canadian, one of them's a Frenchman, the other eight are Americans. This is very important stuff. Please stay with us. You're going to have a wonderful time. Jack Kirby is an important name for you to know because Jack Kirby's career spans the entire history of comic books from the early 30s right up to today. Jack Kirby, when he began, had one of the most uh, energetic styles of any artist. His work practically leaps off the page at you. In the 60s, he went to work for Marvel Comics, where he created the Fantastic Four, the Hulk, uh, the Silver Surfer, and a host of other characters that you all know in collaboration with a man named Stan Lee. This was the basis of the new Marvel House of Ideas, and it again revolutionized comics. And Marvel Comics became the most popular in the world. In the uh, 70s, he worked for another uh, comic house, DC, and created the fourth world, Kirby's fourth world. There were three comics, The Forever People, The New Gods, and Mr. Miracle. And in this uh, uh, triumvirate of comics, he created a whole new universe of characters with a, a lifestyle and with a philosophy that was his alone. I see that story first. I feel that story first. I know those people first. When I put them down, they've already lived. And I put them down as I'd like them to live on those pages. My stories are very sincere. My stories are people's stories. And there's elements in my stories that are very, very real. And it doesn't matter what the subject is. And I've done stories in a wide range of subjects. My inspirations were the fact that I had to make sales. And I had to come up with characters that were no longer stereotypes. In other words, I couldn't depend on gangsters. I had to get something new. And of course, I, for some reason, I, I went to the Bible. I came up with Galactus. And there I was in, in, in front of this tremendous figure who I knew very well because I've always felt him and I, I, I certainly couldn't treat him in the same way that I would 
and the ordinary mortal. And I remember in my first story, I had to back away from him to resolve that story. And of course, the Silver Surfer is the fallen angel. And when Galactus relegated him to Earth, he stayed on Earth. And that was the beginning of his adventures. And they were figures that had never before been used in comics. They were above mythic figures. And of course, they were the first gods. And I began thinking along those lines. And the new gods evolved from those lines. And I began to ask myself, everybody else had their gods, what are ours? What, what is the shape of our society in the form of myth and legend? Who are our gods? Who are our evil gods? And who are our good ones? And I tried to resolve them in the new gods. And I came up with some very, very interesting characters and very good sales, which satisfied, satisfied me immensely. Now, I didn't resolve the questions. I'm a guy who lives with a lot of questions. I say, what's out there? And I try to resolve that. And I never can. I don't think anybody can. Who's got the answers? I sure would like to hear the ultimate one. But I haven't yet. And so I live with a lot of questions. And I find that entertaining. I find that entertaining. And uh, if my life were to win tomorrow, it would be fulfilled in that manner. I would say, the questions have been terrific. The comic book medium itself is special. It's something that was, uh, that's a result of uh, evolvement. I, from what I understand, the editorial comic was first. And then they added a few panels to that and you had a comic strip. And they added a few pages to that and you had a comic book. And what we can add to the comic book? Uh, we may have to think about that. So I believe that's the interesting part of the entire field is to say, what is it? Where is it going? How it'll evolve? And we experiment with that every day. <laughs>